Hey, I'm going to read a poem by the Irish poet Thomas McGreevy called Homage to Vercingetorix. It's in McGreevy's Collected Poems, edited by Susan Schreiben. It helps to know that Vercingetorix was the leader of the Gaulish forces fighting against Caesar, and there's a parallel there with Ireland, um, the Gauls and the Irish both being Celtic nations. The poem also refers to the Black and Tans, who were the uh, British terrorist forces opposing uh, the Irish independence forces in the teens and twenties of the last century, um, and the Black and Tans also engaged in murders of numerous innocent civilians. Uh, so the poem is homage to Vercingetorix. For me, said my host, an oh-so-Norman, Norman Irishman in England, for me, Julius Caesar is divine personages, a part, of course, the greatest man who ever lived. As a guest, as an Irish Irishman, cherishing secretly the dream of his father's dreaming that set loveliness in stone by the waters in the west, ere ever the roving gangsters looked on Ireland, from the verdant turf that once was Cistercian whiteness, the stones still rise, singing with art, vivificantum. Dear Brian Coffey in America, I still keep the photograph you took for me long ago. As such a guest and such an Irishman, how should I but feel constraint? So the play of mind failed to inspire an unanswerable repudiation of ascendancy humanities. It is perhaps debatable whether Caesar was a renegade to the radiant gods of sympathetic understanding, and in the battle that has no ending, went over to the giants who resentfully cherish ever their own dark incomprehension. What is self-evident is that Caesar's book is special pleading. But the answer, which, especially if timed fortunately out of silence, has universal validity and for an Irishman particular significance, is the generalization that a black and tan, even one who has reserves of literary talent and polite manners, is a black and tan.